The Florida Lottery is proud to support education by contributing billions of dollars to Florida schools and awarding countless Bright Future scholarships so Florida students can do more than just dream of a brighter future. They can create one. Learn more at FLALottery.com. And good evening and welcome into the broadcast. We are in Orlando, Florida tonight. John Juliano Park as the Owls get set for their first road game of the season, their first midweek contest of the season. It's FAU versus UCF tonight. And two teams coming off sweeps over the weekend. The Owls swept Monmouth, scored 37 runs in the process. UCF swept Siena, scored 35 runs in the process. So two high-powered offenses We'll go head-to-head -head tonight, and something's got to give. We'll see potentially who is for real and who is still working things out here early in the season. Sam Dean with you. Happy to take you through it tonight as the main attraction. No video tonight for UCF, so happy to have some new listeners out there. And hope you enjoy the broadcast. For the Owls, let's take you through the lineups, and then we'll get to Coach Max, pregame thoughts. It starts with Armando Albert at short and leading off. Nolan Shannon will play first base tonight, hit second. Dylan Goldstein in right field, hits third. Jackson Ross will back clean up and play third base. Mitchell Hardigan is the DH. He hits fifth. Spencer Rich is in center field. He'll bat sixth. Christian Adams will once again play second base after a one-game stint at first base on Sunday. He's back at second tonight. John Schroeder will get the, the call behind the plate tonight, catching and batting eighth. Caleb Pendleton still not ready to go, hopefully for the weekend against USF. And Jalen DeBose will play left field and bat ninth. Evan Waterbore will make the start for the Owls, his first career start for UCF. As I mentioned, also 3-0 and and coming off a sweep. Andrew Brait will lead off and play third. And Nick Romano is the first baseman. He hits second. Tom Jostin will play second base and hit third. Ben McCabe is their big offensive weapon. He's the catcher, and he hits cleanup. Lex Bodecker will hit fifth and play DH. Brady, Brady Shannon in left field hits sixth. Drew Ferro will play short and hit seventh. Corey Robinson is the right fielder. He bats eighth. And John Reese Plumley is also the quarterback on the football team, and he'll play center field and bat ninth. Jacob Marlowe, also a lefty, also making his first career start. So a battle of two lefties making their first career starts tonight. Will be interesting to see how it goes as we talk about in the interview here coming up. The wind's blowing out a little bit, so offense could be on display. Let's hear Coach Mack's thoughts ahead of this first midweek contest of 2023. All right, back to it tonight. First midweek game. Um, what's the mentality tonight? Uh, flush the weekend and you're 0-0 or you're uh, taking the momentum from the sweep over the weekend or a little bit of both? Um, I, I talked to the guys this morning about that. Like, hey, we had a great weekend, or yesterday, I mean. Mm -hmm. We had a great weekend. We practiced yesterday. Um, and now we just got to move on. That's yeah. behind us, and this starts a new week. And um, it's been a good trip. I mean, yeah. bus ride was easy, and we ate. Um, BP was good, and but... All of that changes when you sure. start playing, right? Um, wind blowing out a little bit tonight, that would usually favor us. They also have a very potent offense. Sure. Generally, how does this park play, though? It, it usually plays shorter to left field um, with the prevailing wind. Um, but tonight, it seems to be blowing straight out. Yeah. Um, but they're a good team. They, they know what they're doing. They're a good team. They, this is a really nice facility, huh? I love this place. This is a really nice, a really nice ballpark. Scoreboard is the, they got a new scoreboard. They tarped the apron. You know, it's a nice place. Yeah. New outfield fence. Um, Evan Waterborg gets to start tonight. Um, expectations for him, pitch count, innings. What do you, what do you expect from him? I, I would like to see him get in the 70, 70, 75, you know? Um, but, of course, uh, we'll see what happens, you know. Uh, 
And, you know, there's the one thing about pitch count is it's never an exact science because you could throw 75 easy pitches and say, I feel fine. You could throw 50 difficult pitches, and difficult means runners on base, you're thrown out of the stretch, and you can say, well, it's only 50 pitches, but sometimes those high leverage pitches are more, right? They're, they're more stress. So we just kind of play it by ear. Uh, but we got, you know, bullpen ready to go. We didn't have to use anybody uh, on Sunday, so... Uh, We'll do what we got to do to win the game. Okay. And uh, their starters, Jacob Marlowe, he had two brief one-inning appearances against us last year. What do we know about him? Lefty, I think he's a little bit of a breaking ball guy. Uh, I would think that uh, I think they've had some stuff like us. They had to move a guy up. and So I think they're just going to try to get whatever they can out of the yeah. end of the yeah. Um, alumni tonight, uh, Esteban Puerta. Good guy, engineer. Um, high level, uh, again, you picked another good person, man. He's He just got engaged to a young lady who played on our um, our um, women's soccer team. Oh, nice. Yeah, uh, he was at opening night. Um, got, uh, had a really, really good career. Became a Really worked hard, became an above-average first baseman. Um, he could hit, man. He could really hit. Uh, and he was a great student. And he ended up being an engineer, and um, now he works for, he actually works for Comcast now. His first job out of college was um, with Carnival, and then he did something else, and now he works for Comcast. Uh, really good guy. Good parents. Uh, his parents are a trip. They're fun. They're always fun. Uh, some of the games, but he's uh, he's a good guy. Happy he's doing well. Good to hear. Uh, anything else for you tonight? No. no All right. Just beautiful night here in Orlando. Like, uh, we'll have a number of alums here too again tonight. I've gotten some text already. Guys coming. You know, uh, over the years we've had a lot of guys from this area of the state. You know, it's so, good. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Sounds good. Good luck okay. tonight. We'll see you. So that's Coach Mack's pregame thoughts. The starter for UCF, Jacob Marlowe, has just taken the mound for his warm-up tosses. And again, the lineup for the Owls tonight, it's a similar one, and this will be, for the most part, what you'll see a lot here in the early part of the season. Albert leading off and playing short. Chanuel at first, hitting second. Goldstein in the three spot in right field. Jackson Ross at third base, bats cleanup. Mitchell Hardigan, the DH. Spencer Rich in center, Christian Adams at second. John Schroeder had a great game on Saturday afternoon with two doubles and a three-run homer, and he gets to start tonight. And we'll hope to see Caleb Pendleton over the weekend against USF, but not quite ready to go yet with that finger injury. And Jalen DeBose in left field will bat ninth. Owls are wearing their brand-new gray pinstripe uniforms tonight for the first time, and they're looking good. Beautiful night for baseball here in Orlando. As I mentioned, wind blowing out a little bit. So see how that affects the offense. And we're just about ready for first pitch. Jacob Marlowe did pitch over the weekend. Got an inning in on tell you here just a moment. Got an inning and a third on Friday night as the Knights won 22 to 5 on Friday night, 2 to 1 on Saturday and then 11 to 1 on Sunday against Siena. So scored plenty of runs there. The Owls scored plenty of runs against Monmouth and these two high-powered offenses will go head to head here tonight. We'll see how the pitching bears as everything tends to be going in the favor of the offense with the wind blowing out and Big weekends, both teams coming off big weekends, so see what happens. Armando Albert is going to lead off here tonight, 6-0-1 here in Orlando. Good crowd on hand here at John Uliano Park. UCF in their black tops with the white pants. Got the all clear from the umpire, and here's the first pitch from the lefty Marlowe. And Albert takes it low and away for a ball. We're underway at 6.02. That one 
inside, but caught the inside half. And it's one and one. 88 on the gun for Marlowe. He's got the signs on his wristband, so he'll refer to that. Working quickly. 1-1 one, one pitch. Albert hits a fly ball to right. Going back on it at the wall, and it's gone. Armando Albert leads off with a solo home run. We'll take that. Armando with his first homer of the year, his fourth hit, and the Owls strike first. It's one to nothing on a line drive out to right field, and the right fielder, Corey Robinson, just ran out of room. Good start for the Owls. They're up one nothing. His first swing, he took the first two pitches. And Armando puts the Owls ahead 1-0 here in the top of the first. Now Nolan Shanuel takes a strike. These two teams split the two-game series last year. Nolan swings through a Slider low and away, 79, and he's behind 0-2. UCF won the meeting here in Orlando, 13-1, and that was really the Owls were done in by a, I believe it was a nine-run second inning. There's a grounder up the middle. Off the glove of Marlowe, the third baseman shifted big time right in the shortstop's position. He'll make the play. That'll be a 1-5-3 put out at first base. And Nolan is retired. One down for Dylan Goldstein. As I was saying, UCF won that first game 13-1. They scored most of their runs all in one inning. And then the Owls got the split as they won the second meeting in Boca a week later, 5-3. to three. Here's Dylan Goldstein. He fouls that one off. Goldstein hitting 467, 7 for 15 in the Monmouth series with nine RBIs. 0 1 pitch from Marlowe. And uh, fastball at 89 misses a little low and away. 1 0 here in the top of the first. Armando Albert leads off with the solo home run. 1 1 pitch to Goldstein inside, 2 and 1. Dylan might feel a little hard-pressed on the didn't get the player of the week, which we thought he had a pretty good case in Conference USA. Now he's hit by a pitch right off the bicep, something that happened a lot last year. That one was an off-speed pitch, although still 80 miles an hour. Not like it was a underhanded in there. But it hit him right in the bicep, and he'll take first base. So the Owls have a runner on, one out, and Jackson Ross will be the hitter. First right-handed hitter in the Owls lineup here, Ross. It's a pop-up into foul territory. First baseman will give it a look, but it will drift out of play. Jackson Ross was 3 for 10 with a home run and two RBIs in the opening weekend against Monmouth. Right side of the infield's wide open for him. They have him shifted kind of up the middle here. 0 1 pitch, and he goes down the third baseline. That's a fair ball into the corner. Goldstein will round second. He'll go for third. They're going to wave him in, and Ross is going to stop at second with an RBI double. 2-0 Owls here in the top of the first. Jackson Ross comes through. Goldstein comes all the way around to score from first. And it's 2-0. Here's Mitchell Hardigan. Good start for the Owls. Offense picking up where they left off on Sunday when they scored 17 runs against Monmouth. Ross now at second with one out. First one to Hardigan. Inside, 1-0. Marlowe trying to find the strike zone early on here. 
taking a long look at that wristband. Now there is a pitch clock, so it can't take too long to figure out what the pitch is. Hard again with a ground ball to short. That'll move Ross over to third. 6-3 on the put out at first base. There's two outs. And it'll be up to Spencer Rich. Spencer Rich had a good weekend. Four for 12, he stole three bases. Scored six runs, that was a team high. RBI chance here in the top of the first. We'd like to really make this hurt on Marlowe. Rich down to third, gets through the legs of the third baseman. I think they'll probably call that a hit. He'll go for second, throw in, they're gonna get him there. So it'll probably be a single and an RBI and he'll be out trying to stretch it into a double. But Ross scores, it's three nothing. Good start for the Owls, the home run by Albert, the double by Ross and the base hit by Rich. Three nothing after one half inning, back in a moment. The Florida Lottery is proud to support education by contributing billions of dollars to Florida schools and awarding countless Bright Future scholarships so Florida students can do more than just dream of a brighter future. They can create one. Learn more at flalottery.com. So a great start for the Owls. They get three in the top of the first. And Evan Waterbore will take the mound. Lineup he'll face for UCF will be Andrew Brait, Nick Romano, Tom Jostin, Ben McCabe, Lex Bodecker, Brady Shannon, Drew Farreau, Corey Robinson, John Reese Plumley. Waterbore, the lefty, making his first career start here tonight. He Pitched on Saturday, one inning, and it was a quick inning. Just has a little bit of a tune-up. At that time, the Owls were up 14-2 to two in that game. Went on, went on to win 14-8. to eight. So, Brait will lead off. He's 3-for-9. And their opening weekend series against Siena. Redshirt Jr. out of Melbourne, Florida, 5'8", 185. So Waterboard's got a lead to protect here in the bottom of the first. Always a good feeling for a pitcher making your first career start. You got a little bit of a cushion. First pitch just misses outside, 89 on the fastball from Waterboard. Fastball's in there, also 89, it's one and one. One, one pitch, foul back. And waterboard jumps ahead, one and two. Next one to Brait. Just gets a piece of it, fouls it back to the screen. One two pitch. Once again, oh, he doesn't get the call. Good fastball there from Waterbore. 
doesn't get the call, and Brayton has another life. It's two and two. And that time he rings him up. Goes right back to the same pitch. Threw that fastball a couple of times there. And Bray goes down looking. Good start for Waterboard as he strikes out the first hitter. And here's Romano. Nick Romano. Two for nine. Both of his hits were home runs in the opening weekend series. First one from Waterboard in there for a strike. Pumping him in. Early on here. That one misses outside, and we're evened up one and one. Seventy nine mile an hour change up there from Waterbore finds the lower half of the strike zone. He's ahead one and two here on Romano, the first baseman for UCF tonight. Waterbore looking for strikeout number two and as many hitters. Got his sign. Here's the one two pitch. Doesn't get the call. Went back to the fastball. Consistently at eighty nine for Evan Waterbore. That one fouled back out of the ballpark. Back behind home plate. Still it's two and two on Romano here. This one line past Jackson Ross into the left field corner. Jalen DeBose will play it off the ricochet off the wall and get it into second. It's going to be a one out double for. Romano, that was a rocket off the bat of Romano, and he takes second base. A one out, and here's Tom Jostin. He was three for eight with a home run and two RBI over the weekend. 6 2, 205 out of Palatine, Illinois. Waterboard's behind in the count, 1 0, pitching out of the stretch. And a swing and a foul tip by Jostin. And it's 1 and 1. Jostin hits from the left side. So the lefty-lefty matchup here for Waterboard. Runner in scoring position with one out. That one just misses a little low. Jostin gets ahead 2-1 and one on Waterboard. Waterboard trying to get on the same page here with John Schroeder, his catcher. Here's the 2-1 pitch. Jostin grounds it to short. Albert will backhand, look the runner back to second, and a nice scoop by Nolan Shanuel at first base. Throw was a little bit low, but Nolan made it look pretty easy. That'll be a 6-3 put out, and there's two outs. And it'll be up to Ben McCabe. And we mentioned at the top, this is their... Big offensive threat. He was 6 for 12 with three home runs and seven RBIs against Siena in three games. He bats from the right side here. He's their catcher. From Sarasota, Florida, it's redshirt senior, 6 foot 185. This would be a big momentum boost if Waterboard can get McCabe. First one misses high and away. You also might be want, want to be a little careful with him. You have Lex Bodecker on deck. Bodecker was two for ten in that opening weekend against Siena. 
1 0. Ground ball towards third is foul. It's back to 1 and 1. Kind of jammed him a little bit there. McCabe just kind of fought it off. Armando Albert, the shortstop, is back with about a step on the grass. And then you've got Christian Adams playing up the middle. Well, they have him shifted somewhat here. Long look in here for Waterbore, the 1-1 one -one pitch. Popped up, shallow right field. Goldstein going over towards the foul line, and he will make the catch. Wind blowing it a little bit, kind of played some tricks on him, but Goldstein able to make the catch in right, and UCF strands a runner in scoring position after the one-out double. Oz will be back up to bat. It'll be Adams, Schroeder, and DeBose when we come back. Christian Adams leads off for the Owls here in the top of the second. They lead 3-0. It'll be Adams, Schroeder, and DeBose against Marlowe. Adams' a little chopper down the first baseline is foul. It's 1-1. One one. Marlowe trying to settle in after giving up the three runs in the first. That one's low in the dirt, 2-1 and one on Adams. Good weekend for Christian Adams. He was 6-for-11 with a home run and six RBIs against Monmouth. The 2-1 pitch, grounder to first. That'll be scooped up by first baseman Romano, and he'll touch the bag for... The first out. That'll bring in John Schroeder. We'll see if he can keep it going from Saturday at five RBIs. Three run homer and two doubles. Now he'll bat from the right side here tonight to start against Marlowe, the lefty. He takes that one a little bit low. One zero pitch, big swing and a miss, and Schroeder all evened up one and one. Now 
Kind of caught a piece of that, but followed in the glove, and he's behind now one and two. Jalen DeBose waiting on deck. Next one from Marlowe, and he got him to chase it in the dirt. Schroeder strikes out. First strikeout for Marlowe, and Jalen DeBose will bat with two outs and nobody on. DeBose takes a big cut. 80 mile an hour, call it a slider from Marlowe. And Jalen swung through it. Marlowe looks like he's made a little bit of an adjustment here against the Owls hitters. 0 1 pitch. Jalen lines it to left, but right at the left fielder. And the catch is going to be made out there by Brady Shannon. So the Owls go down in order in the second. And UCF back up to bat. FAU leading 3 0. Lex Bodecker leads off for UCF here in the bottom of the second. Owls up 3-0. Bodecker, Shannon, and Ferro do up against Evan Waterbore, who stranded a runner in the first. That one fouled off the foot of Bodecker. He's the DH for UCF. 6-1, 225 out of Lima, Ohio. That's from the left side. Bodecker was two for 10 with a home run and two RBIs against Siena. That one misses just a little high and away from Waterbore. It's one and one. One inside fastball. And Bodecker spins out of the way. So Waterbore falls behind two and one. On the leadoff man here in the second inning. That one also high and inside. Brushes him back, three and one. Swing and a miss. Bodecker with a huge cut at that one. 87 on the gun, and Waterbore got him to swing through it. And we're all filled up, three and two. Three, two pitch, fouled off to the left. And we'll do it again. We've got the definition of a cotton candy sky here tonight in Orlando. 
just about sunset. That one inside, so Bodecker draws a leadoff walk. And he looks towards his home dugout. And trying to get him fired up, trying to get the offense going for the Knights. Here's Shannon. Brady Shannon hit five fifty is hitting five fifty six, five for nine, two home runs, five RBIs through the first three games. And he bats with a runner on and nobody out. From the right side, the first pitch to Shannon is in there for a strike. Seventy eight on a change up from Evan Waterbore. Got a sign for the 0 1 pitch. Swing and a miss. Good fastball by Evan Waterbore. 0 and 2. Waterbore out of the stretch. The 0 2 pitch. Or look at first. There goes Bodecker. He Stops, goes back, throw down, is not in time. Pitch missed high and away, and it's one and two. Bodecker took a big step towards second base and then thought better of it. Scurried back to first. One and two. Swing and a miss. Water bore another strikeout. That's his second. And there's one out. Here's Drew Ferro. He is a freshman. 6'3", 190 out of Tallahassee. 5 for 12 with a home run, four RBIs in the first series. Throw over by Waterbore, keeping an eye on Bodecker. Bodecker has not attempted a steal yet this year. One out. Here's the first pitch to Ferro. Misses low. UCF looks like they have about a hundred people in their dugout. It's <laughs> it's the railing. They've got that filled up, and then another row of guys standing on the bench behind them. There's a good pitch by Waterbore. That was the changeup again. It's in there for a strike, and it's one and one. And that dugout is on Evan Waterbore. They're loud, and they're into it. Here's the 1-1 pitch. Foul back. 1-2. and two. Bodecker at first after the leadoff walk. Shannon struck out swing. And now Ferro is behind in the count 1-2. and two. That one fouled off the ankle of Ferro, and he stays alive. Another try at the 1-2 pitch. Nope, going to throw back, and they got him picked off in a rundown. Shanuel to Albert, and Albert will apply the tag. So Bodecker is erased. And that was the second time he faked towards second base and then changed his mind. And the, that time, Waterboard threw over, and they're able to pick him off. It'll be, let's see, one, three, six on the pickoff. So now there's two outs and two strikes on Ferro. And he strikes out. Good work by Evan Waterboard. They're going to tag him as Shorter dropped the third strike. And just like that, the Knights go down 1-2-3 despite the leadoff walk. I'll still on top 3 nothing, and we go to the top of the third inning.
Hi, I'm Lily. I played beach volleyball here at FAU. When I was awarded with the Bright Futures Scholarship, I was really happy and excited. Bright Futures has contributed to my career by allowing me to get two bachelor's degrees, which is the first step in becoming a physician assistant. Because I got the Bright Futures Scholarship, I was able to avoid a lot of financial stress. Thank you so much to the Florida Lottery for supporting Bright Futures. I'm so grateful and it's made a huge difference for me. So 3 nothing, top of the third. It'll be the top of the order due up for the Owls. Albert, Shanuel, and Goldstein. Armando Albert led off the game with a solo home run. His first of the year. He hit four last year. First pitch from Marlowe, low and away for a ball. Check that. Armando hit five last year, 24 RBIs. He hit 251 for the season. Next one from Marlowe in there for a strike, and we're evened up one and one. One one pitch to Armando Albert. Swing and a miss. Chased it low and away, and he falls behind one and two. Three hits, three runs for the Owls so far. One hit for UCF. Armando dodges out of the way of that one. Fastball at 89 inside. And it's two and two. Two pitch, up and in, full count. Armando has already walked four times and been hit by a pitch twice so far this season. That's an on-base percentage of 562 coming into tonight, and then add in the home run. That'll go up a little bit more. He fouls this one back. A fastball high and inside. He just kind of fought it off. Three two pitch, chopper to first, and off the glove of the first baseman, Romano. And I think that'll probably be called an error. We'll see how they score it. It will be an error on the first baseman, Romano. So Armando will run the bases with Nolan Shanuel up and nobody out. The chopper to first base, and Romano, he tried to backhand it. I'm not sure if that was the best play for him. Nolan drops down a bunt. This is going to be tough. Throw down. It gets away from the first baseman. Nolan is safe at first as he kind of collides with the glove of the first baseman. That'll be an infield single, I believe, or a bunt single for Nolan. First and third. Hopefully he's okay. Hopefully the first baseman Romano's okay. The throw was low in the dirt, and Nolan, as he was running through the bag, just basically ran right through the glove of the first baseman, Romano. And that one might have hurt it, maybe his shin or something. He's kind of limping around over there at first base, kind of trying to stretch it out. It's first and third here with nobody out. Nolan drops down a bunt single. 
See how he runs at the bases. Dylan Goldstein will be the hitter with nobody out. And he takes a fastball low and away, 1-0. This is a chance for the Owls to bust it wide open here. Looks like they are going to call that an error on the first baseman, maybe the pitcher, probably a, an error on the pitcher for the bad throw, Marlowe. going to be a throwing air on Marlowe. So it's 1-0 and on Goldstein. And he chased it low and away. Good pitch by Marlowe. It's 1-1. One one. Dylan was hit by a pitch his first time up. Got a chance to get into double digits here in RBIs. With runners at the corners and nobody out. And a swing and a miss. 80 mile an hour slider from Marlowe. Jumps ahead one and two. Two errors in the inning here for UCF has put the Owls with an opportunity to add on to a 3 0 lead. Goldstein with a ground ball to second. Throw to second. They'll get one there, and Dylan will beat it out. The throw is wild anyways. So they get the force at second base, and Goldstein will be aboard on the fielder's choice. And he'll get an RBI for that. 4-6 on the put out at second, and it's 4 nothing. So that's his 10th RBI of the season. Here's Jackson Ross. RBI double his first time up. Goldstein, the runner at first. By the way, the Owls, without normal third base coach Ricky Santiago tonight, so Coach Mack is down there waving him around third base. First pitch strike to Ross. The Owls still looking for their first hit of the inning, but they've brought a run across. It's 4 nothing. Ross lays off, pitch in the dirt, and it's one and one. Call that a sinker from Marlowe. Ross with a chopper towards third. Coach Mack could not make the stab. As that one gets by him in foul territory. Board currently shows three errors on the Knights, but I count two in the inning. Not sure where the third one would have come from. Here's the one-two pitch to Ross. Throw over on Goldstein. Dylan Goldstein, no steal attempts yet this year. Now they fixed it. Two errors in the inning. Ross behind in the count. Looking for another RBI. That one's a fastball up and in. Two and two. Marlowe gets his sign quickly this time. Here's the 2 2 pitch. Ross grounds it to third. Good stab by the third baseman. They'll get the out at second. And the Throw from the second baseman into the dugout. And Ross will get second base that way on a throwing error. Fielder's choice and an error for Ross. It'll be the third error of the inning by UCF. That one on the second baseman, Tom Joston. Goldstein is retired on the 5 4 put out at second base. So the Owls still don't have a hit in the inning. They'll have a runner in scoring position here with two outs. And Mitchell Hardigan will be the hitter. Mitchell grounded out to short his first time up. Fouls off the first pitch. It's 0-1.
a one pitch. A chopper back to the backstop. Mitch quickly behind 0 2 here. O2 pitch. Hard again the other way. Oh, what a play by the shortstop, Faro. Diving play, and he takes away a run for the Owls. L6 is Hardigan laced that one, and Faro going to his left made a nice play to record the out. So the Owls do get one run without a hit. They lead 4 nothing as we go to the bottom of the third. Corey Robinson leads off for UCF here in the bottom of the third inning. Owls up 4-0. First pitch from Evan Waterbore. Robinson squares to bunt. Pulls back, but it's a strike. Three errors by the Knights in the bottom of the third or the top of the third. Lead to a run for FAU. Everyone's fouled back. And Robinson is behind 0-2. He was three for nine with two RBIs in the Siena series. He's a sophomore from Port Orange, Florida, 5'11", 165. And that one high and away. One and two from Waterbore. Waterbore walked the leadoff man in the second, but then picked him off and struck out the next two hitters. Here's the 1-2 pitch. That one high and away. 2-2. Two and two. The sign for the 2-2 two -two pitch. Check to swing. They appeal. Say he did not go around. And it's a full count. Three two pitch now from Evan Waterbore. Low and inside, doesn't get the call. And for the second straight inning, he has walked the leadoff man. So that'll bring in the nine hitter, John Reese Plumley. Football fans will recognize the name. He is the quarterback on the UCF football team. He was three for seven against Siena with three RBIs. He's playing center field here tonight. Six foot, 200 pound. Redshirt senior out of Hattiesburg, Mississippi takes a ball from Waterbore. One and oh, Waterbore working quickly here. He'll throw over to first, keep an eye on 
Robinson, who's one for one in steal attempts. There goes Robinson running. Throw down from Schroeder, and it skips off the runner, Robinson. Armando Alberts there to back it up, though. It'll be a stolen base for Corey Robinson. So a runner at second now, and nobody out. 2-0 count on Plumley. Check that one and one is the count on Plumley. And now he's behind one and two as he swings through a good fastball by Waterbore. Worked out of trouble in the first inning after a one out double. UCF has a runner in scoring position once again. It's a one two pitch. Winging a foul tip into the glove of Schroeder, and that'll be a strikeout. Third strike, or rather fourth strikeout for Evan Waterbore. And the lineup will flip over to Andrew Brait. He struck out looking to start the bottom of the first. So one out now, runner at second. Off-speed pitch there from Waterbore in there for a strike. Did a pretty good job of getting ahead. This will be pitch number 45 here, and it misses outside. One and one the count on Brait. One one pitch. Line to center. That will fall in front of Spencer Rich. Probably going to bring in a run. He'll get it into Albert. Base hit for Brait. An RBI single, and UCF is on the board. It's four to one. Just a little looper over the head of Christian Adams and into center field. The RBI for Brait is his first of the year. And it's 4-1. to one. Here's Nick Romano. He doubled his first time up. Batting from the right side. See if Brait wants to run here. He's one for one in steal attempts. He takes a big lead. First pitch strike to Romano. Romano was left at second base after the one-out double back in the first. The 0-1 is outside. Three big bats in the UCF lineup. Jostin, McCabe, and Bodecker waiting on deck. Here's a pop-up on the infield. Adams, back on the outfield grass, will make the catch. And that's a big out there. As Romano's retired, there's two down for Jostin. Grounded out to short his first time up. He's hitting 333, three for nine on the season. Waterboard will throw over, keep a close eye on Brait. First pitch to Jostin in the dirt, bounces away from Schroeder, but he's able to keep it in front of him. Walk 
Waterboard's got his sign. And Jostad is able to lay off that pitch low and away. He's ahead 2-0. and oh. This one's fought off, and Adams, who's on the outfield grass, it's still going to find its way over his head. Just kind of a pop-up, and he also did have Jostin shifted, but it somehow found its way over the head of Adams. So it's a base hit for Jostin. Brait will move over to third. First and third with two outs. And that'll bring in McCabe. Waterboard was able to get him to pop out to right field his first time up with a runner on second. He's going to have to dodge a bullet here once again in the bottom of the third, first and third. McCabe is the tying run at the plate. He takes a big cut at the first one and swings through it. 78 on the gun, right over the top of it. A one pitch. Popped up foul. Out of play, off to the right. Quickly 0-2 on McCabe. Waterboard trying to elude the damage. Lined. Albert right there makes the catch. Barely had to move for it, and Armando Albert with a nice play. McCabe is retired, and the Owls dodge one there. They still lead by three. UCF does get one run on the base hit by Brait, but it's 4-1 to one as we go to the fourth inning. Spencer Rich will lead off for the Owls here in the top of the fourth. It's a 4-1 game. Rich, an RBI single his first time up, but he was thrown out at second trying to stretch it. He squares the bunt here, drops it down. Going to be a tough play with his speed, but a good play by the third baseman, Brait, and he's able to get the out at first. Second time the Owls have dropped down a bunt when you really wouldn't expect it. And that time, a good play by Brait, the third baseman. So one pitch, one out here in the fourth, and here's Christian Adams. He grounded out to first base his first time up. He swings and misses at the first one for Marlowe. A one pitch. High and inside for a ball. 
Arlo has settled in after a rocky first inning. Defense let him down in the third. The 1-1 pitch to Adams. Swing and a miss. He chased it low and away. 1-2 and two on the FAU second baseman. That one low and away. Two and two. Next one from Marlowe. Adams a little chopper. Marlowe will field it. Spin and throw. Just in time to get Adams at first base. And there's two down. John Schroeder will hit. Schroeder struck out, struck out swinging his first time up. Say that five times fast. Schroeder struck out swinging. Marlowe has quickly recorded the first two outs, the fourth. Swing and a miss by Schroeder. Fastball at 88. That was pitch number 51 from Jacob Marlowe. Here's the 0-1. High and away. 1-1. One and one. One one pitch to Schroeder, outside, two and one. They've got him played pretty straight up. Schroeder looking for his first hit of the year from the right side. Did all his damage on Saturday from the left side. He takes that one inside, and now he's got a hitter's count. It's three and one. See if he gets something good to hit here. Jalen DeBose is on deck. 3-1 pitch. Schroeder with a high pop-up down the third base line. And the left fielder going over. He's going to make the catch as he collides with the wall and foul territory down there for the third out. So the Owls go down in order in the fourth. We go to the bottom half. It's 4-1 FAU. Bottom of the fourth inning, 56 pitches so far for Evan Waterbor. He's given up one run on three hits. And he's found himself in a jam in the first, got out of it, found himself in a jam in the third, got out of it again. He's got four strikeouts so far. He'll face... Bodecker, Shannon, and Ferro here in the bottom of the fourth inning, holding on to a 4-1 lead. Bodecker walked his first time up, was picked off of first base. First pitch from Waterbor is fouled back to the screen. Up 
Odecker is two for 10 on the year so far. 0-1 pitch. Pop foul back our way. 0-2 on the DH for UCF. O2 pitch from Waterbore. Ooh, he doesn't get the call on the outside. A pretty good fastball. He asks where that missed. And it's one and two on Bodecker. Try it again. The one two pitch. He's got a piece of it. Barely fouled it back. To this point, pretty good job by Evan Waterbury. Always just looking for four or five innings out of your midweek guy. Give you a chance, and he's certainly done that early on here. Bodecker is able to lay off that pitch low and away, 76 on the gun, and it's 2-2. Two and two. Trying to put him away, 2-2 two -two pitch, pop foul. That'll get out of play, off to the third base side. So Bodecker will get another chance. Two-two pitch from Waterbore. Popped up foul again. This one will also drift out of play. Making him work for it here in the leadoff hitter of the bottom of the fourth inning. Just after 7 p.m. here in Orlando. Another try at the 2-2. He checks his swing, doesn't go around, and it's a full count. Pitch was just a little high and inside. Waterboard walked him to start the second, trying to avoid that same result here. This one's lined down the first base line, but foul. Bodecker was on that one. See if Waterboard goes back to the fastball. Bodecker seems like he had that one timed up. He was behind the last two pitches and a hair out in front of that one. So three and two. Grounded towards Jackson Ross off his glove. It'll drift down the third base line. Ross will track it down. And so that'll probably be a... See how they're going to score it. I'm not sure. It's going to be up to them. They're asking me. I'm not sure. Going to give it a hit. Infield single for Bodecker. Tough play for Ross. I could I could understand that. Backhand stop. So Bodecker is on at first, and Shannon will be the hitter. And he takes a strike from Waterbore. That one a little bit low, one and one. Shannon struck out swinging his first time up. One, one pitch. Popped up on the infield. Adams, Shannon will over. Adams is going to take it. He'll make the catch. One out here in the fourth inning. That'll bring in Ferro. He struck out swinging to end the second. One out and a runner at first. Waterbore out of the stretch. Way out in front. Ferro swings through it. He 
UCF now out hitting the Owls 4-3. That's a foul tip back to the backstop. Waterboard jumping out in front, 0-2. Ground ball would be nice here for Waterboard. Then you get 8, 9, and 1 in the fifth. So we'll take a strikeout as well. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Long look at first base. Right down central. Rung him up. Strikeout number five for Evan Waterboard as Ferro goes down for the second time. That time he was just looking. So two outs and Robinson. Walked his first time up, stole second, came around to score. First pitch from Waterboard, fastball just missed a little high and outside. One zero pitch, grounded to third. This time Jackson Ross gets in front of it, flips it over to Shanuel at first base for the out. Lead off single is wasted for UCF as they come up empty. I'll still lead four one. We're through four here in Orlando. The Florida Lottery is proud to support education by contributing billions of dollars to Florida schools and awarding countless Bright Future scholarships so Florida students can do more than just dream of a brighter future. They can create one. Learn more at FLALottery.com. UCF is going to go to their bullpen here in the top of the fifth. It'll be another lefty, Zach Chapel, 6'1", 210, redshirt senior out of Ponte Vedra Beach, Florida. This will be his first appearance of the season for UCF. He'll face Jalen DeBose, Armando Albert, and Nolan Shanuel here in the top of the fifth. So final line on Marlowe. Four innings, three hits, four runs. Three of them were earned. He struck out one, hit a batter, no walks. And he departs after 55 pitches and four innings. Chapel lefty, as I watch him take his warm-up toss, is a big leg kick. And we'll see how he fares against the Owls. Nine, one, and two hitters. Marlowe settled in, a, like I mentioned before, a rough first inning. Gave up three runs, including the home run by Albert and a double by Ross. But he settled in after that, and if it weren't for the poor defense behind him in the third, where he didn't give up a hit. In fact, all three hits he gave up were in the first inning. Gave up one run in the third, no fault of his own. First pitch, Jalen DeBose scores up to bunt, and it's a strike. 0-1 on the Owls' left fielder, who lined out the left field his first time up, hit the ball hard. The 0-1 pitch. Chopper to first. And Romano will beat DeBose to the bag. 
one down. Lineup will flip over for Albert. As I mentioned, the solo home run led off the game. And then he reached on an error and scored in the third inning. I'd like to see him get on base here in front of Shanuel and Goldstein. Takes one on the outside corner. It's a called strike. Oh, one pitch in the dirt. Gets away from the catcher. It's one and one. One one pitch from Chapel in there for a strike. Armando still waiting to swing the bat here. One and two. Behind in the count with one out. Next one from Chapel. Ooh, he lays off it and he rung him up. Never swung the bat there, and it's two quick outs for the lefty Chapel. That'll bring in Shanuel. Grounded out in the first inning and reached on an error in the third. That one skips away from the catcher. Watching Nolan take BP. Now the wind is not blowing out nearly as much as it was during batting practice, but Nolan was hitting some absolute moonshots in batting practice. Outfield, or some of the relief pitchers that were shagging balls in the outfield were just looking up, watching them go. They weren't even a threat. That one, again, gets by the catcher, and it's 2-0. Nolan trying to extend the inning to Dylan Goldstein. 2-0 pitch. Call that a curveball from Chapel, and it missed up in the zone. Didn't really drop. So 3-0. Does he have the green light here on 3-0 with two outs? If I'm Chapel, I don't throw anything near the plate. Just give him the walk. Fastball, ooh, no one thought he had the walk. But it's a strike on the outside corner, and it's 3-1. and one. I'd probably get the same pitch again here with a hitter's count. Again, if I'm Chapel, though, I don't come anywhere near the plate. 3-1 pitch. Another curveball. That one dropped in there. Nolan does not like the call. He kind of turns away. That's a full count now. And a payoff pitch coming. They have him heavily shifted to the right side. Nolan chops one back to the pitcher. Chapel will underhand it to first to get the out. And that will end the top of the fifth. Halfway home, Owls lead 4-1.
Call it a night for Evan Waterbort. And the Owls are going to go to their bullpen here with C.J. Williams. At a 12-pitch scoreless outing on Friday night. And he'll pitch here in the fifth here tonight. Final line on Waterbort, four innings, four hits, one run, two walks. He struck out five. Excellent work from Evan Waterbore. 74 pitches. Coach Mack talked about it in the pregame. He'd like to get somewhere in that range out of them. They got exactly that, and that's all you can ask for. So he departs. C.J. Williams takes over. And first pitch gets away from Schroeder. The hitter is Plumley. Struck out, swinging back in the third, and is only at bat against Waterbore. The 1-0 pitch from C.J. Williams, high and away. 2-0. C.J. works quickly. This one's popped up. Shannon will give it a look in foul territory, and it'll drift. It's actually going to drift into the second deck up there. C.J., a 5'10", 180 junior out of Deerfield Beach, Florida. Comes to FAU from Indian River. Two one pitch, fastball right down central. Plumley watched it go by. 2-2. Two -two. This one's popped up, shallow right. Goldstein coming in. Now he goes back a few steps. He makes the catch. One out here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Lineup will flip over for UCF. Here's Andrew Brait. One for two. Strikeout and an RBI single back in the third. First pitch fastball in there for a strike from C.J. Williams. 89 on the gun. Gets the ball, gets his sign. Here comes the 0-1 pitch. Nice changeup in there for a strike. And Brait, before he can get comfortable in the box, he's already down 0-2. CJ looking for his first strikeout. And a foul tip as it gets by Schroeder. So he stays alive. Great, taking his time, getting back in the box. Now there is clock. We're keeping an eye on that one's fouled off. Off the balcony of the second deck in foul territory. It's 0-2. CJ's already got the ball, and he's ready for the 0-2 pitch. Just missed outside, didn't get the call. Went to the off speed. One and two. This one's popped up on the infield. Looks like Adams is calling for it. And he'll make the catch. Two outs here in the fifth. That'll bring in Romano. He has one of four UCF hits. That double back in the first inning. And he popped out to second in the third. Jay Williams looking for a quick inning here. Popped up, shallow center. Albert going back. Going to leave it for DeBose, and DeBose, it goes off his glove. That'll be an error on Jalen DeBose. Little miscommunication there between Albert and DeBose, and Jalen made kind of a lunging effort at it at the last second. So that'll be an error. And Romano is on base with two outs. Let's see if C.J. Williams can shake it off and get Tom Jostin. He's one for two, a base hit in his last at-bat. 
Fastball in their first strike. Actually, that uh, we'll call that a slider. That was more off speed. The numbers on the radar gun suggest it was not a fastball. 0 and 1. Next one to Jostin. Inside, low and inside for a ball. 1 and 1. That was the fastball. Romano's the runner at first with two outs. The 1-1 one -one pitch fouled back. And CJ has got him 1-2 and two here, one pitch away from getting out of this. Of course, anything that would hap happen from now to the rest of the inning would be unearned if UCF were to score. CJ would like to avoid that altogether here. The one-two pitch. Ooh, did he go? They say no. Try to get him to chase low and away and check swing. They say on appeal he did not go around. So it's two and two. Next one to Jostin. Pop foul, back behind home plate. And we'll do it again. Two-two pitch. Grounder to first. Shanuel will get in front of it, knock it down, and step on the bag to get the out. So good work by C.J. Williams. Faces four hitters and holds UCF scoreless in the fifth. Moving right along, we go to the top of the sixth inning. It's 4-1 FAU. Goldstein, Ross, and Hardigan do up top of the sixth. More than halfway home here in Orlando. Second inning of work for Chapel. Set the Owls down in order in the fifth. Goldstein hit by a pitch in the first inning and reached on a fielder's choice back in the third. Drove in a run in the process. First pitch from Chapel. Goldstein squares up the bunt, pulls back, and the pitch is low and away. One zero pitch, Chapel. And that one misses outside. Two and zero. Chapel needed just twelve pitches to get through the fifth. The Owls haven't had a hit since the opening inning. 
Got off to that good start. Kind of took the crowd out of it a little bit, but can't get too comfortable here in the top of the sixth. That's just outside 3-0 and on Goldstein. Love a leadoff walk here. We'd take that just as effective. Dylan will be taking all the way here on 3-0. and Fastball's in there for a strike. Hitters count now. Three one pitch. Ooh, just missed it. Good cut by Goldstein, and he foul tipped it back to the screen. He was on that one. And it's a full count. Jackson Ross waits on deck. Three two. Goldstein, liner, shortstop, diving, stops it, and the throw is not in time at first. That'll be a infield single. Good play there by the shortstop, Faro. second time we've said that tonight, but that will be a single for Goldstein. He's got his first hit of the night and a leadoff hit for the Owls. Their first hit since the first inning. Coach Mack down there at third base hasn't had a ton to do. And that might be it for Chapel here. They're going to come out and talk to him. So a mound visit. They have not signaled down to the bullpen yet, although Michael Cleary, our first base coach, and Dylan Goldstein at first base are both running towards the dugout, which might suggest, yep, here comes the reliever out of the bullpen, and UCF will go to the bullpen. That'll be it for Chapel. They tried to stretch him out a little bit but he does not get an out here in the sixth inning. One inning for him. UCF will go to the bullpen. I'll tell you more about that in just a moment. I played beach volleyball here at FAU. When I was awarded with the Bright Futures Scholarship, I was really happy and excited. Bright Futures has contributed to my career by allowing me to get two bachelor's degrees, which is the first step in becoming a physician assistant. Because I got the Bright Futures Scholarship, I was able to avoid a lot of financial stress. Thank you so much to the Florida Lottery for supporting Bright Futures. I'm so grateful and it's made a huge difference for me. So the Knights go back to the bullpen. They will go to a righty, Najir Victor, 6'1", 195 junior from the Virgin Islands. This will be his debut. And he will face Jackson Ross with one on and nobody out here in the top of the sixth. Ross had an RBI double back in the first and reached on a fielder's choice in the third. Goldstein the runner at first with nobody out. 
See what Ross can do. First pitch from Victor. Fastball is inside. Ross backs away from the plate. 1-0. 91 on the gun from Najir Victor. The first righty the Owls have seen tonight. 1-0 pitch. Jackson with a deep fly ball to left center. Going back at the wall. Gone. Jackson Ross goes deep. Two-run homer. And it's 6-1 Owls. Jackson Ross with his second and third RBIs of the night. And he greets Najir Victor with a two-run homer. Six to one FAU. Second of the year for Jackson Ross. And here's Mitchell Hardigan. The Owls went without a hit between the second through fifth innings, but they've got two here in the sixth, and they've got two runs on the board. First pitch is fouled off by Hardigan. There is no wind at the moment, so that was just pure power hitting by Jackson Ross. Got three RBIs tonight. 0-1 pitch to Hardigan, check swing, went around, 0-2. 93 mile an hour fastball from Victor. Owls with a five run lead. Nobody out here in the top of the sixth. Hardigan lays off it. And that's actually strike three. The umpire didn't signal for a strikeout, but. Hardigan goes down looking, and one out for Spencer Rich. One for two, RBI single back in the first, and a ground out in the third, or rather the fourth. First pitch from Victor, and Spencer Rich can't catch up to the 94. 0-1. Rich hitting 357 on the year. Takes an off speed pitch that time. Count is even at one and one. Victor's got a sign. Here comes the one one pitch. Rich, a check swing, but it's in there for a strike, anyways. Doesn't matter. It's one and two. Victor can bring the velocity. One and two, and he blew it right by Rich there. Back-to-back -back strikeouts. Two outs. 94, Rich couldn't catch up to it. And it's up to Christian Adams. Base is empty. Adams is looking for his first hit of the night. 0 for 2 so far. First pitch from Victor, up in the zone, 1-0. Oh. 1-0 pitch in the dirt, 2-0. Oh. Trying to extend this inning to John Schroeder. That one gets away from the catcher. Adams ahead now 3-0. and and None of the three have been particularly close here from Najir Victor. That's a fastball. It's in there for a strike. Victor took a little bit off it and located it better. Hitters count, though, for Adams. Should get a fastball here. 
3-1 pitch. Can he catch up to it? No. Blew it right by him. 3-2. and two. 92 on the gun. Full count payoff pitch coming to Christian Adams. Just got a piece of it, followed it back to the screen. Three two pitch in the dirt, and he walked him, and the inning will continue for John Schroeder. Adams is aboard for the first time. First one to Schroeder, batting from his preferred left side. The side that he did all his damage with uh, from on Saturday. He takes the first pitch high and inside for a ball. It's 1-0. There's a fast ball. He doesn't get the call. And Victor falls behind again, 2-0. It's behind home plate, giving our home plate umpire some trouble for that call. Here's the 2-0 pitch. And that one catches the outside corner for a strike. It's 2-1. Schroeder struck out in the second, flew out the left in the fourth. If he can catch up to one of these fastballs from Victor. He can send it a long way. That's a fastball in there for a strike at 91. And it's 2-2 two and two with two outs and a runner at first base. Two-two pitch. Missed high and away. Try to take something off it with the changeup. Full count, Adams will be on the move over there at first base. Let's see if Victor just goes right after him with a fastball here. The 3 2 pitch. Ooh, just caught a piece of it, fouled it off the catcher. And we'll do it again. Adams will retreat to first base. This is a big at bat in this game here. UCF down by five. Schroeder can put one in the gap, tack another one on. 3 2 pitch. Another foul tip off the catcher. Schroeder hanging tough here. Victor referring to his wristband on his left hand. Now looking towards the dugout for some clarification. You only have so much time between pitches. Got to get in there and throw. Umpire's got to stopwatch. He's keeping track of it. There goes Adams. Schroeder rips it the other way to left. That's a base hit. Adams will go to third, and they're going to hold him there with two outs. So John Schroeder continues to do damage from the left side of the plate. That's a base hit to extend the inning. First and third with two outs for Jalen DeBose. DeBose is 0 for 2. Got a big RBI chance here for Jalen. He's got one on the year. Two out walk by Adams and a base hit by Schroeder. First one to DeBose over his head. 
one and zero, had to duck out of the way. Dallas have three hits in the inning, two singles and a two-run homer. The Bows with a pop-up in foul territory. This will get out of play. One and one. One one pitch to Jalen DeBose. Swing and a miss. Good pitch there. Was expecting fastball. Went off speed, and Jalen swung right over the top of it. He's behind in the count, one and two. Here's the one two pitch from Victor. Swing and a miss. Foul tip into the glove. And DeBose strikes out. The Owls send seven to the plate in the sixth. They get the two run homer by Jackson Ross. And it's a five run lead, six to one, as we go to the bottom of the sixth inning. Second inning of work for C.J. Williams. He'll face McCabe, Bodecker, and Shannon here in the bottom of the sixth inning. McCabe is 0 for 2. He lined out to short his last time up. That was with runners at first and third. It was a big chance for UCF. Evan Waterbore was able to retire him. Now Schroeder has some issues with the pitch comp system attached to his attached to the back of his chest protector. Umpire helps him out with that. And we're ready for the bottom of the sixth inning. CJ Williams delivers. An off speed pitch up in the zone for ball one. CJ worked around a two out error in the fifth. There's a foul tip as McKay was way out in front of it. It's one and one. Back to back off speed pitches there from Williams. Here's the one one. This time he goes fastball up in the zone. Two and one. This one's lined deep to left at the wall, and McCabe goes deep for a solo home run. So McCabe leads off here in the bottom of the sixth with a solo home run. Into the left, in the bullpen in left field, the Owls bullpen out there. And UCF chips away at 6 to 2. Wait, McCabe really has some big time power. That was out of here in a hurry. It's his fourth home run of the year, his eighth RBI. 
Lucky for the Owls, though, nobody was on base. Here's Bodecker. First run allowed this year by Williams. And this one's a deep fly ball to right, going back on a Goldstein. And he'll leave it for Spencer Rich to make the catch. In right center field. Williams can exhale after that one. There's a one out for Brady Shannon. Shannon is 0 for 2. 6-2 game here in the bottom of the sixth inning. First pitch from Williams. Ooh, hit him. Did it hit him in the sump in the face? It looked like Shannon is down on one knee. I think it hit him in the chin. And he is holding his chin. Now hunched over. It was an off speed pitch. It was 73. Now that doesn't take away. It, it still hurts. That's still pretty hard. And a lot of players will wear that protector around their cheek or that extends kind of in front of the mouth. I'm not sure if Shannon's helmet has that or not. No blood. Looks like he's going to be okay. He will take first base on a hit by pitch. Just might have knocked the wind out of him a little bit. Kick his way down to first base. Batter is going to be Drew Ferro. Talking it over with Shannon, deciding if he's going to stay in the game or not. And the Owls have a lefty up and throwing in their bullpen. Looks like Tyler Monzone, I think. Could be Sam Drumheller. One out here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Trying to determine if Shannon is going to stay in the game or not. He's putting his protective gear on his wrist, so I think he is. They're going to give him a cup of water. C.J. Williams is going to throw some warm-up tosses while we wait. And Shannon is going to make his way down to first base. Jordan Tabachman will come out and talk to C.J. Williams here. Playing catch with Jackson Ross. Ferro has struck out twice, once swinging and once looking. CF has a little bit of momentum here, so this could be a play by the Owls just to kind of settle things down and kind of ice the hitter at the plate. Calm down, C.J. Williams. He gives Jordan Tabachman the, the pat on the back. Usually the, that would go the other way around. The, pitcher, the pitching coach would give the pitcher the pat on the back, but C.J. gave... Jordan to Bachman a pat on the back as if to say, okay, I got this. Take, take it on back to the dugout. CJ will deliver to Ferro with a fastball that misses outside. 1-0. One, One out here in the sixth. Takes a look over at the runner at first. Grounder up the middle. Albert will take it himself. Step on the back. Throw to first. Double play. 6-3 on the double play. Albert was taken out by the slide at first at second base. And just like that, the Owls are out of the inning. UCF gets the solo home run from McCabe, but Williams is able to limit the damage. We go to the seventh at 6-2. to
the Florida Lottery is proud to support education by contributing billions of dollars to Florida schools and awarding countless Bright Future scholarships so Florida students can do more than just dream of a brighter future. They can create one. Learn more at FLALottery.com. Owsley knows that the best part of a football game is the snacks. And many of the cans, bottles, and packages from the concession stand are recyclable. Be a super fan like Owsley and recycle right while you're at the stadium. Well, we're coming down the stretch here in the top of the seventh inning. UCF goes back to their bullpen for Zach Austin, a 6'2", 190 senior out of Holland, Pennsylvania. This will be his second appearance of the year. He pitched one inning on Friday against Siena, walked two, struck out one, no runs allowed. And he'll face the top of the order for the Owls, Albert, Shanuel, and Goldstein. 6-2, to two, Florida Atlantic leading UCF. That one's in the dirt, 1-0 on Albert, who's got a home run tonight. Reached on an air in the third and struck out looking in the fifth. And 1-0 on Albert. Fastball's in there for a strike at 92. Armando hitting 308 for the year. 1-1 one, one pitch. Off speed, missed outside. Change up from Austin. And Armando is not going to chase that pitch. Good plate discipline there by Armando Albert. Two one pitch now from Austin. Armando lays off that pitch, but it's a fastball, 94. You could really just watch it go by as a, on a blur. It's two and two. Some of these UCF relievers can really bring the velocity. Two-two pitch. Armando lays off it. Another changeup, high and away. And I'm betting he goes back for the fastball here. Challenge Armando Albert. 2-2, two -two, or rather 3-2 pitch. Low and away, and he walked him. Lead off walk. Albert on base for the second time, not counting the error in the third inning. <clears throat> and here's Nolan Shanuel. Nolan is 0 for 3. Ground out, reached on an air, and another ground out. Finally gets to face a right-handed pitcher, though, here tonight. They're going to check on Armando, who's one for one in steal attempts. Of course, last year, Armando led the squad in steals at 19. First one, Shanuel gets away from the catcher, and Armando will move up to second base on the wild pitch. So runner in scoring position here for Nolan Shanuel with nobody out. 
Chance for the Owls to tack on every insurance run. They're going to call it a pass ball, actually, not the wild pitch that I mentioned. And I think that's a good call. 1-0 pitch. Nolan, oh, the big cut. He's way out in front of it. Maybe expecting fastball. Austin came at him with a changeup at 79, and it's 1-1. One one. One, one pitch. That one's upstairs. 2-1. Austin's got a sign for the 2-1 pitch, and here it is. Nolan watches a fastball. He doesn't get the call. 92 on that one. It's 3-1. and one. He Walked Albert on a full count, and now a hitter's count for Shanuel. Dylan Goldstein waits on deck. Three one pitch. Nolan watches it way out of the zone, up and away. Back to back walks. First and second with nobody out. Nobody throwing in the UCF bullpen at the moment, although they are moving around out there. Now some stretching. Mound visit here from Ben McCabe. Talk it over with Zach Austin. He's thrown 11 pitches to two batters so far. They're looking for his first out. Goldstein was hit by a pitch in the first inning. Reached on a fielder's choice in the third. And singled and scored on the home run by Ross in the sixth. First pitch from Austin. Low and away in the dirt. Good block by McCabe. Keep it in front of him. Albert at second, Shanuel at first with nobody out. 1-0 pitch. Goldstein takes it for a strike. Low outside corner. That time he got the call. One and one. Next one from Austin. He's going to throw to second. He throws it into center field. And both runners are going to move up, throw into second, not in time. Shanuel's in there. Albert down to third. And that'll be an error on the pitcher, Austin. The fourth error of the night for UCF. It just doesn't make a whole lot of sense to throw down to second base there. And it went by the shortstop into center field. So now second and third, double play is eliminated. Infield will come in on the grass against Goldstein. Base hit's going to score two runs. 1-1, one, one, Goldstein chops it to the shortstop, who's in the second baseman's position. He flips it over to first for the out. That'll be 6-3 on the put out at first base. And Shanuel and Albert both stay put. Opportunity missed there for Goldstein, but the defense was in and they made a good play so one out here's Jackson Ross two run homer his last time up RBI double back in the first so he's got three RBIs tonight for each base on a fielder's choice in the third inning Austin's got his sign. Here's the first one to Ross. That one skips in the dirt. Good block by McCabe. He'll keep it in front of him. Again, the infield is on the grass.
1-0 pitch. Another one in the dirt. It's like Austin's going to that kind of sinker type pitch and having trouble locating it, or the Owls are just not chasing it. 2 0 on Ross. Got the hot hand here tonight with three RBIs. That one's in the dirt. 3 0. All three of them have bounced in front of Ben McCabe. And for the third time in this inning, an FAU hitter has a three ball count. Let's see what Jackson Ross does here. He'll be taking all the way on 3 0. And that one nowhere close, so he walks the bases loaded. And they're juiced for Mitchell Hardigan, looking for his first hit of the night. He's 0 for 3. That might be it for Austin. Yep, they're going to go to the bullpen. They're going to go to a righty out there. And that's that. whoever that is that they're going to bring in for the bullpen is going to have a tall task. Bases loaded, one out, and a power-hitting Mitchell Hardigan will come to the plate here in the top of the seventh inning when we come back. The Florida Lottery is proud to support education by contributing billions of dollars to Florida schools and awarding countless Bright Future scholarships so Florida students can do more than just dream of a brighter future. They can create one. Learn more at FLALottery.com. So the new pitcher for UCF is Cameron Crane, his first appearance of the season. He made 22 appearances last year, 3.38 ERA, 45 and a third innings. Pitched in both games against the Owls, three innings in the first meeting and two and two-third in the second. Gave up a run in each. And he'll face Mitchell Hardigan here with one out and the bases loaded. And kind of a turning point in this game here. The Owls have a chance to really basically salt this one away if Hardigan can put one over the heads of the infielders who are in on the grass. Crane, a lefty, so they bring in the lefty for the lefty-lefty matchup. Hardigan is 0 for 3. Here's the first pitch from Crane. And he takes it for a 
Fastball, a little bit low and inside. Doesn't get the call. 89 on the gun. Albert at third, Shanuel at second, and Jackson Ross at first. All three have walked. The Owls don't have a hit yet in the inning. Hardigan takes a fastball up and away. No place to put him here, 2-0. Tough spot for Crane to come in. No room for error. Speaking of errors, UCF has made four of them tonight. The Owls have six runs on six hits. Here's the 2-0 pitch. Outside, 3-0, throw down to first. There's no reason for Jackson Ross to be taking any kind of lead. He'll have to slide head first back into the bag. It's 3-0 on Mitchell Hardigan. He'll be taking all the way here because Crane has to throw a strike. Force him to throw one over the plate. He'll get the same pitch on 3-1. The 3-0. That one's in there for a strike. Caught the inside corner. And likely, as I said, to see the same pitch. Hardigan has one home run so far this season. The 3-1 pitch, he takes it, and it's a walk. Fourth walk of the inning, and the Owls add a run. It's 7-2. So Hardigan with the second RBI of the year, and here's Spencer Rich. Bases are still loaded, one out. The second time tonight that the Owls have scored a run without a hit. Hardigan, or rather Rich, takes a ball in the dirt. McCabe is able to keep it close enough, and all the three runners stay put. Crane has now thrown six pitches, and five of them have been outside the zone. Spencer Rich has... Five RBIs on the year, and a chance to tack on a few more here. He checks his swing and didn't go around. Two and zero. Oh. Crane has a sign for the two zero -oh pitch. Ooh, blew it by him, 89, 2-1. Rich just a little bit behind that one. Still ahead in the count, though, with one out. This one's fouled off, back behind home plate. Count is even at two and two. Hitting 333 for the year. His first at bat of the season with the bases loaded. Two two pitch. That one's low and inside. Good block by McCabe, who's had really had to work hard in this inning. Full count. And again, no place to put him. Christian Adams waits on deck. Shanuel, Ross, and Hardigan on base. One out for Spencer Rich. Here's the 3-2. Spencer, deep fly ball to center. Going back at the track. The catch is going to be made. Shanuel will tag up from third. Ross will move up. Hardigan will stay put at first. Sack fly for Spencer Rich makes it 8-2. to two. And Rich barely missed that one. That was, that had a chance. It'll be first and third with two outs.
And so Rich with the second RBI of the game. And Christian Adams will bat with two down. And runners at the corners. Adams walked his last time up. He's 0 for 2. First pitch is in there for a strike from Crane. They have him shifted to the right. Left side is wide open. They're going to throw over to first. Check on Hardigan over there. Oh, and one the count on Adams. Hitting 462. He's got six RBIs. Oh, one pitch. Adams with a deep fly ball to right into the corner, looking up and gone. Christian Adams with his second of the year. That's a three run bomb, and it's 11 to two. Christian Adams comes through. Up to nine RBIs on the year, and the Owls have busted this one open in the seventh inning. That's their first hit of the inning, but it is a big one, a three-run shot by Christian Adams, and this is a nine-run game. Clears the bases with a three-run bomb. 11-2, to a five spot here in the top of the seventh for FAU. And John Schroeder, John Schroeder will bat with the bases empty in two outs. That one up in the zone misses to Schroeder. Singled in his last at bat. He's one for three. And that sends some fans towards the exits here at John Uliano Park. Low and inside. 2-0 on Schroeder. The Owls only have seven hits tonight, but they've accounted for 11 runs. Plenty of walks to go around and plenty of errors to go around for UCF. Good teams make you pay, and the Owls have done that here tonight. Got one on the outside corner. 2-1 and one on Schroeder. Five walks tonight has helped the cause for the Owls. 2-1 pitch. Schroeder takes it. A little bit high and away. 3-1. and one. Hitters count here for Schroeder. And he takes it way up and away. That's the, I have to count them up, one, two, three, four, fifth walk of the inning. The only hit was the home run by Adams. Well, it hasn't gone well for Crane, and they're going to go back to the bullpen. This has been a tough relief outing for the UCF bullpen here in the seventh between Austin and Crane. The two of them have not combined to get three outs yet. And it's not over yet, the... Knights are going to go back to the pen for another lefty to face Jalen DeBose. 11 to 2 here in the top of the seventh inning.
UCF goes to Dominic Castellano, the lefty out of the bullpen. He'll face Jalen DeBose here. Second appearance of the year, pitched two-thirds of an inning on Friday night against Siena. He's ahead of DeBose, 0-1. Runner at first is Schroeder. DeBose takes a strike, 0-2. Five walks in the inning. The Owls have just one hit, and it was a big one, a Christian Adams. Three-run homer. They posted five. It's 11-2. to two. As DeBose gets a piece of that, fouls it back. Jalen is 0 for 3 tonight. O2 pitch. Takes it outside for a ball, one and two. Castellano is sophomore. From Tampa. One two pitch. There goes the runner Schroeder, but it doesn't matter as DeBose swings through it for the strikeout. The Owls send all nine men to the plate in the top of the seventh inning. They push five across with just one hit, and it's 11 to two. Time to stretch here in Orlando. C.J. Williams is back out there for the bottom of the seventh inning, now with a nine-run lead to protect. It'll be Robinson, Plumlee, and Brait due up for the Knights. The first pitch is popped up in a left, down the left field line in foul territory. Albert and DeBose, and it fouls and falls in foul territory right between the three. Ross, Albert, and DeBose, they were all there. Not sure who called for it, but it fell just to the left of Jalen DeBose. So it's strike one on Robinson. He walked and grounded out so far. C.J. Williams in his third inning of work. He's given up one hit. That was the home run to McCabe that led off the sixth. That was a long time ago. Alice had a long top of the seventh inning. Here's the 0-1. Got a piece of it, fouled it back to the screen. Another lefty is up and throwing in the bullpen. Might be the same lefty that was throwing before. This one's lofted into left, down the line, and foul. Robinson a little out in front of it. Count is 0-2. Pitch number 29 for C.J. Williams. Misses up in the zone. 
One and two. This one's popped up. Shannon will give it a look in foul territory. And he'll make the catch. He bobbled it. <laughs> Ended up catching it with his bare hand. And that's the first out. Down the first base line, you have a lot of people, a lot of fans, of course, giving you trouble down there. And I'm not sure if Nolan lost focus for a moment, but he was able to hold on for the first out. And here's Plumley. He's 0 for 2. He squares up to bunt, pulls back, and it's a ball. One-o -oh pitch. Plumley with a check swing and fouls it back to the screen. One and one. Next one from Williams. Goes off speed. And it catches the inside corner for a strike. And the next one, a changeup. Plumley doesn't even attempt to get out of the way, but it is a hit by pitch. And he'll make his way down to first base. He just stood there and wore that one. Top of the order, Andrew Brait. One for three tonight. The second hit batter for C.J. Williams. Now nobody throwing in the Owls bullpen. First one to break. Fastball's in there for a strike at 85. Williams with a throw over. Nolan Shanuel is not ready for it, though, and it goes down into foul territory down the right field line. And Plumley is going to go all the way to third base. Miscommunication there between C.J. Williams and Nolan Shanuel. That'll be a throwing error on C.J. So runner at third with one out. Second error of the night for the Owls. O one one count on Brait. He fouls it off to the right side. Look out. I drive. They have a screen down the first base line, but that dipped right over it. So 0-2 oh now on Brait. And CJ out of the stretch. Delivers. This is high and away. One and two. One two pitch to break. Fought it off. Shanuel won't be able to get there. It's in foul territory. These two teams will meet again on March 28th in Boca Raton. A little over a month from now. Let's see how differently each team's season progresses before that time. This one's lined into center. Spencer Rich will come in. He's got an arm. They're going to test him. Throw in is a little off. And the run will score on the sack fly. So Brait drives in his second run of the night. And it's 11-3 to here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Nick Romano is one for three tonight. He'll face Williams for the second time. Reached on an error in his last at-bat. In there for a strike. No. <laughs> okay, right down the middle. Not called a strike, though. And 1-0. and oh. So the changeup just kind of lofted right down the middle from CJ. And now in the dirt, it's 2-0. and oh.
Fastball up in the zone, 3-0 and on Romano. Two outs here in the bottom of the seventh inning. 3-0 pitch. Not close. That one a four-pitch walk. And that will extend the inning to Tom Jostin. But that's going to be it for C.J. Williams. The Owls are going to go to the bullpen. Here comes head coach John McCormack. Going to go to a lefty. See who it is coming in here for the Owls. Looks like Max Martsoff, I believe. Get confirmation on it in a moment. Yeah, it's going to be Max Martsoff. I'll tell you more about that in just a moment. Two outs here at the bottom of the seventh inning. So Max Martsoff is the new pitcher for the Owls. This will be his second appearance. Inning in two-thirds on Friday night. Scoreless, struck out one. He faces Tom Jostin here in the bottom of the seventh inning. 11-3, the Owls ahead of the Knights. Runner at first. And Romano. The lefty delivers in the dirt, low and away. One and one. The 1-1 pitch, fastball in there for a strike at 85 from Max Martsoff. Jostin tonight is one for three, single back in the third. Martsoff, he checks the swing, doesn't go around, it's two and two. Fastball, again, doesn't get the call. And Jostin has worked it full. Three and two, and the runner at first, Romano, will be off with the pitch. Low outside corner, rung him up. Strike three, Jostin. Left the bat on his shoulder. So Martsoff comes in and does the job, gets out of it with the strikeout. UCF gets the one run, and it's 11 to 3 as we go to the top of the eighth inning.
Top of the order due up for the Owls here in the top of the eighth. It's Albert, Shanuel, and Goldstein the same way they started the seventh inning. Albert walked to start the seventh. That led to a long inning. First pitch is in there for a strike from Castellano. Albert has had a productive night. He scored three runs. Solo home run, walk, reached on an air, and struck out looking. 0-1 pitch. In the dirt, 1-1. One and one. On base percentage is at 550. 750 average when leading off an inning. The 1-1 one, one pitch, low and away. 2-1. and one. Albert backs off the plate on that one. 3-1. and one. The fastball up in the zone. High and inside. Trying to work another walk. He's got four hits this year, but he's been on base a ton. He takes a fastball here for a strike, and it's three and two. Three two pitch. Ooh, did that hit him? It did. It didn't matter as a walk, anyways, but call it a hit by pitch. And he's on base again. Officially, that'll be the third time he's on base, but he's run the bases four times now. And here's Nolan Shanuel. He worked a walk in his last at bat. He's looking for his first hit of the night. Nolan fights that one off, fouled to the left side. Nolan is hitting 417 and finding ways to get on base. Got on base 11 times in 16 plate appearances in the Monmouth series. And he sends a deep fly ball to right center, going back at the track, and catch is going to be made. Yes, the catch is made out there. And Nolan's trying to say it was not caught. Armando Albert retreats to first base, so that's the end of the play right there. Now John McCormack is going to argue. Nolan, I think, passed Armando on the base pass, so I think what they're saying is he's out no matter what. I'm not going to talk about it. I, it was tough to tell from you know, 375 feet away. So Nolan is going to be out, and Armando Albert will retreat to first base. Just be a long fly out, I believe. Unless they're trying to say that he passed him on the base pass. But Armando retreats to first. There's one out for Dylan Goldstein. Nolan almost connected for his second home run of the year there. First pitch is low and away to Goldstein, 1-0. Dylan has been hit by a pitch, reached on a fielder's choice, singled and scored, and grounded out to short. Castellano taking a long look at his wristband with the signs on it. Now delivers a strike, one and one. Dylan with a big cut. He swings through the fastball, one and two. Hitting 444. Drove in his 10th run of the year back in the third inning. T 
Two and two on Goldstein. Again, Castellano taking a long time to look at the wristband. Umpire's got the stopwatch. There is the pitch clock in play. 2-2 two -two pitch, and yeah, Goldstein can't catch up to it. He strikes out, and that's the second out. Castellano has dodged two, and Shanuel and Goldstein. It's up to Jackson Ross, who's had a nice night with a double and a homer. He walked and scored in his last at-bat. Three RBIs for Jackson Ross tonight, giving him five on the year. In the dirt, blocked by McCabe. Albert stays put at first base. Throw over to first, keep an eye on Armando Albert. One zero pitch in there for a strike, and we're evened up at one and one. Next one from Castellano, Albert, or rather Ross, with a line drive in the center, going back, and that one's gone. Jackson Ross has his second home run of the night. Straight away center field, the deepest part of the ballpark on a line drive. It's 13 to 3. Jackson Ross comes through. He's got five RBIs. And this one is just about in the books. Ross with a huge hit there. And the Owls are up by 10. Only got eight hits tonight. That is their fourth home run. Here's Mitchell Hardigan. Low and away. Hardigan walked and got the RBI in his last at bat. It's a bases loaded walk. 13 to 3 here in the top of the eighth inning. Hardigan takes a strike. One and one. Jackson Ross is now up to seven RBIs on the year. Here's the 1-1 one -one pitch, and Hardigan fought that one off down the third base line, but foul. They've mostly cleared out here at John Uliano Park is this one. Is just about wrapped up, 13-3. to three. Here's Hardigan, fouls it back to the screen. See who the Owls go with on the mound in the bottom of the eighth inning. Probably stick with Max Martsoff would be my guess. Only faced one batter in the bottom of the seventh. Hardigan, little cue shot to third base, and it's caught by the third baseman. Brait called a line out to third. And the Owls... Get the two-run homer by Ross to add on two more. It's 13-3 to three as we go to the bottom of the eighth inning.
Bottom of the eighth inning, Max Martsoff is back out there for the house. He'll face McCabe to lead it off here in the bottom of the eighth. McCabe had a solo homer in his last at-bat back in the sixth. 13-3, Owls well on their way to a fourth consecutive win to start the year. An emphatic one at that. Here's a ground to the second. Christian Adams throws it over to first for the out. One down here in the eighth. That'll bring in Lex Bodecker. One for two, a walk, a single, and a fly out so far. Check swing by Bodecker, but it's a strike in there from Martsoff. C.J. Williams will be in line for the victory because Evan Waterbore went four innings. Look at the final line on C.J., by the way, as that one's fouled off by Bodecker. Two and two-thirds, he gave up a hit, two runs. One of them was earned, a walk. 45 pitches for C.J. Williams tonight. If the Owls hold on, they'll get the win. That one's fouled back by Bodecker to the backstop. Stays alive. It's still 0-2. Bodecker now 3 for 12 for the year. Check swing. Didn't go around. A little bit high and out of the zone. Kind of a... Polar opposite of the game here in Orlando last year where UCF won 13-1. to This year it's the Owls. This one the other way to left. DeBose is out there, and he'll make the catch. Two outs here in the bottom of the eighth inning. That'll bring in Brady Shannon. Hit by a pitch in his last at bat. He's 0 for 2. Shannon taking his time getting into the box here. That's three runs on five hits tonight for UCF. Oh, Martsoff just blows it right by him. First pitch strike on Shannon. Oh and one. It's a fastball up in the zone. It's one and one. Popped up right out in front of home plate. And Shanuel is calling for it. He'll make the catch with a foot in foul territory for the third out. UCF goes down one, two, three in the eighth. And the Owls are three outs away. But first they'll bat at the top of the ninth, 13 to three after eight innings.
Spencer Rich will lead off bottom of, or rather top of the ninth inning, thirteen to three. And Spencer Rich fights this one off in a shallow left field, and a catch will be made out there. First pitch swing by Rich. One up, one down here in the ninth. Here's Christian Adams. He really broke it wide open in the seventh with that three-run homer. Also got a walk tonight. First pitch from Castellano is in there for a strike. It's 0-1. Adams with a big cut. He swings through it for strike two. Up to nine RBIs now. Seven for 14 for the season. And he lets that one go. It's in the dirt. It's blocked by McCabe. The Owls do have a righty throwing out there in the bullpen. See who they go to. In the bottom of the ninth, chopper to short, scooped up by the third baseman, actually. That's Andrew Brait who makes the play. 5-3 on the put out. And John Schroeder will bat with two outs, and the base is empty. Schroeder is one for three, also has a walk. First pitch is low and inside to Schroeder, one and oh. Schroeder with a grounder to short, backhand play by a shortstop for Rope throws across the diamond in time for the out. So the outs go quickly here in the top of the ninth. Three outs to go. They're up 13-3 as we approach the final frame here from Orlando.
So a whole host of changes here for the Owls defensively. Jalen DeBose will come out of the game. Dom Presto will move into his spot. He'll play second base, though. Christian Adams down to first. Nolan Shanuel out to right. Dylan Goldstein over to left. Brian Bully on the mound, and the first pitch he throws hits Drew Ferro. So the Knights have a runner on with nobody out to lead off the inning. Brian Bully making his first appearance. Now a sophomore. Appeared in eight games last year with four starts, 6.75 ERA. Here's Corey Robinson. First pitch is high and away to Robinson. 1-0. And this is going to be actually chopper to third. Jackson Ross will make the play, and that was actually Matt Cedarberg pinch hitting for Robinson, and he grounds out to third. And Faro moves up to second base. We'll have another pinch hitter here. It'll be Cole Russo. Sophomore. This will be his fourth at bat of the year. Check that. It'll be his 13th at bat of the year. He's played in all three games so far. Three for 12. And he takes a ball from Brian Bully. Fastball. 88 on the gun. Doesn't get the call, though. A little bit high in the zone. 2-0. and Pitch hitting for John Reese Plumley. Finishes the night 0-2. 0-4-2. There's a strike at 87 on the low outside corner from Bully. One bounces in the dirt in front of Schroeder. Three and one. Hitters count here for Russo. And he gets a piece of that, fouls it off Schroeder. And back to the backstop. Full count. Three two pitch. Popped up foul and out of play off to the left. Three runs on five hits tonight for UCF. They've made four errors. The Owls scored their 13 runs on eight hits. They've made two errors. Three two pitch. Kind of chased it, but got a piece and fouled it off, and we'll do it again. With Russo at the plate. Faro, the runner at second with one out. Three two pitch. Swing and a miss. Bully gets the strikeout his first. UCF is down to their final out. Top of the order. Be another pinch hitter. As the Knights clear their bench, Caden Matheny will get the at-bat. Sophomore outfielder. One out to go here for the Owls for a happy bus ride home. That one just misses a little outside. Third at-bat of the year for Matheny. Looking for his first hit. He scored a run, struck out. Bully out of the stretch with a runner at second base. 
That one misses outside as well. 2-0. The 2-0 pitch, swing and a miss. Big fastball by Bully. Up in the zone, couldn't catch up to it. It's 2-1. and one. The 2-1 pitch. Caught the outside corner, 2-2, two and, two, and down to their final strike now. Bully trying to... Finish this one off. The 2-2. Two -two. Grounder to short. Albert will back up, make the play, throw across in time. That'll do it. The Owls knock off UCF in blowout fashion, 13-3. Brian Bully. Finishes off this ninth inning. Five RBIs tonight for Jackson Ross. Three for Christian Adams. He had the big hit in the seventh inning with the three-run homer. The Owls hit four home runs tonight. Got it off on a good start with Armando Albert in the top of the first inning. Good work from Evan Waterborne and C.J. Williams. And that's four in a row to start the year. We're back at it on Friday night at home against USF. As we try to conquer the rest of Florida. And then Miami next Tuesday. UConn a week from Friday. So the Owls get the win here tonight. 13 runs on 8 hits. They made 2 errors. UCF 3 runs on 5 hits. They made 4 errors. Back with you on Friday night. A 6.30 first pitch against USF. Hope you join us for that one. Thank you for joining us here tonight from Orlando. We say goodnight. Enjoy the rest of your Tuesday.